Microsoft Teams. I had problems with this before, but let's cross our fingers. So I'm going to go ahead and record within Microsoft Teams. Let's, hopefully that will work. All right, let's get right into it. Sorry about that. I need to try Google Meet because we're going to have an online talk on Thursday. You guys are invited uh, if you want to attend. Uh, I don't think you'll be having class during that hour, so if you want to attend, certainly you can do so. I think uh, Luis Humberto said something about also presenting to you guys specifically, so that that would be great too if we can schedule that in also. Uh, we'll do that. Um, but first of all, it was great seeing uh, many of you uh, yesterday morning, and uh, hopefully... Uh, hopefully we'll be back face to face in classes soon. Um, this is kind of difficult for everyone trying to have classes completely online, but we'll make the best of it. And um, yeah, we'll keep working forward, trying to achieve our goals for all of your classes in prope. Today, uh, I've got a lot of things scheduled here and uh, the first thing I wanted to do is to give those who did not present last Friday an opportunity to uh, to speak. So I want to start with that first. So in uh, the participants view in Microsoft Teams, go ahead and raise your hand. Those of you who did not participate, did not speak in Friday's activity, and I'll choose you at random. I'll give you a prompt. We just have a few of us, and so I want to give those an opportunity to participate. So go ahead and raise your hand if you want to speak, and you can raise your hand along the top right-hand corner of your screen, and I'll choose only those who are have uh, raised your hand. Um, I went and listened to those who participated last Friday. I left or recorded some group feedback that I'm going to share with everyone after everyone has participated after today's class. And uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll do a, an activity which will give you an opportunity to self-assess your performance. Okay, so I want to look at uh, a few things, the way in which you answered your questions. In general, though, I will say that as a group, everyone did much better um, speaking longer. Remember that when you're given one minute, we want to try to use as much of that one minute in your response as possible. Okay, so uh, as a group, as a whole, we did much better in that sense. Um, we'll speak uh, more about it later after everyone has uh, participated. Um, I don't see anyone who has raised their hand. So again, I want to give everyone uh, those who did not partic participate last Friday, an opportunity to do so at this time. So, but you need to raise your hand. Okay, if anyone is not sure how to raise your hand, jump in, unmute your microphone, and say, hey, I don't know how to raise my hand. And I'll show you how to raise your hand. I'm not sure if you raise your hands in other classes. We don't use it that often in our class. So it's fine if you're not sure how to do it. Just let me know. One thing is not knowing how to raise your hand. The other is choosing not to raise your hand. No one is raising their hand. No one wants to participate. Those who have not participated. No? Are you sure? Going once. Yes. I already erased it. Okay. All right. Great. All right, Tanya. Anyone else? So it's just Tanya who's going to participate. Is that? Teacher, I just raised my hand. Ah, okay. I see. Great. I see uh, Luis Enrique. Mirna has raised okay. her hand. Okay. And Tanya. Anyone else who has not participated who would like to participate? There we go. And Nicole. Okay. Anyone else? I'll read the speaking prompt twice. I'll read the question twice. 
And then I'll give you a minute to think about your response. You're encouraged to take notes, to prepare for your response, and then you'll have one minute to respond to the question. All right, here we go. Describe a place, for example, a park in your city where you often visit. Explain why. I'll read it a second time. Describe a place, for example, a park in your city where you often visit. Explain why. Okay, I'll give you one minute to prepare for a response. Okay, uh, Nicole, uh, would you like to give a response? No, yet, teacher. Okay, so are you, you're not going to respond? So, yeah, but now I don't feel prepared yet. Okay. All right, so we'll go on to the next uh, person. Um, Luis Enrique, would you like to provide a response? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Mm, I will. Sometimes I go to the park because I, I feel so good because when I go visit, I can get some wind. Three and walk to get distracted when I get stressed. And sometimes I I went to visit to my friend to visit how he is good or bad and go to play video games. To to be a talk or sometimes. Okay, great. Thank you, Luis Enrique. Uh, Tanya, would you like to give a response? Yes, teacher. Yeah. Um, I sure. Well, uh, I'm not a person who like. I always is going out to, to the park, but when I do it, um, I go to the football field there is in my town because there is a lot of grass mountains, uh, games, swings, sliders, handrails, um, benches to, to sit down. And for example, the weather is very good when I go. Uh, I. I like to do exercise there in the, the football file. And for example, th there is a, a, a woman selling food and groceries. So I like to, to buy them and, and sit down with my family and see the sunshine or something like that. Um, I like it too much to go to that place. And I don't know, it's like one of my favorite places where Okay, great. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you for your response. All right. I don't see any other hands raised, so uh, we'll conclude there. Um, like I said before, I have provided some feedback. Uh, tomorrow we'll spend uh, some time talking about, again, how to give the best response to these types of prompts. And one of the things that I want to focus on tomorrow, and you can listen to your response. I think I uploaded the video in our playlist a couple, like a day or two ago. You should be able to find your response. Go ahead and start listening to how you responded and ask yourself, am I on topic or off topic? Am I answering specifically the question that's being asked or am I drifting off topic a little bit? OK, and that's one of the things we're going to focus on tomorrow specifically, and uh, we'll do an activity where we look and spend a little bit more time self assessing our performance, really listening carefully to the question and then comparing what we say uh, to uh, to provide the best response. OK, all right, so. Um, let me pull up here and bear with me here. I had everything set up before we got started, uh, before I opened up Google Meet, but unfortunately I had to restart my computer. So um, today what I'd like to do um, 
is make a few comments about the podcast. I, I was listening to some of your, uh, in fact, all of your podcasts um, this week. And um, I want to stress the importance, guys, of providing a, an episode, a, podca a podcast episode, where it's more conversational. I want you to try to avoid reading text. It's very, very important going forward, that you're not reading anything. No scripts, no information from, uh, you know, some website. It has to be all off the top of your head. And it's really obvious when you're reading, okay? So I would much prefer to hear errors and mistakes and, and you stop and you're, you're, there are a lot of pauses. I want to hear those. I want to hear the mistakes. I don't want to hear like w that you're not making any mistakes reading uh, texts because that's not the purpose of these podcasts. These pr the, the purpose of doing this podcast, number one, is that you're thinking about and expressing an opinion about something that is of interest to you. That's number one. And then number two, you use that interest that you have in that topic, in that subject, and you become more familiar with the language that's required to share that opinion. What I mean by creating the language, I mean talking off the top of your head. That is, creating the language in the moment with the mistakes and everything, right? around that topic. And let me give you a couple of examples. And I've heard, you know, several examples, several really good examples of this, but let me show you two examples of uh, some podcasts that I really like. And what do I like about it? It's off the top of their head. They're creating the language in the moment. And the first one I want to pull up is Jazz's uh, one of her episodes, in fact, her last episode. Now, I'm sorry, we can see. I'm just going to advance to anywhere in uh, Jazz's uh, podcast, episode number eight. All right. And I can you guys hear that first of all? Just want to make sure you can hear the audio. Yes. 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 yes all right. Sure. So let's just listen to just a couple of seconds of uh, Jazz's episode. I like this character design because it's like very simple, but that's the purpose. The purpose of this design to be really simple because she uh, entered to a witchy world. So in that world, everyone have these like pointed ears and. I mean, you can tell right away that she's not reading anything, and you can hear some of her mistakes, and that's great. That's fine. I want to hear those mistakes. Here's the thing. The only way that you guys are going to feel more comfortable speaking English is by doing it. And sometimes we do exercises where we read text, right? And I'm not saying that we can never read text aloud and that there's some benefit in doing that. And we'll do that occasionally. But that's not the purpose for these podcasts. I want you to really uh, pay attention to how you're preparing for these podcasts, you can have notes, you can have keywords, you can have mind maps, you can use notes to prepare for the podcast, but preparing for the podcast is not creating a script. It really needs to be just off the top of your head. Colorful destiny and she always do what she wants to do. So I really liked her personality that she don't want to be like a worker of the government. So I really like her style. And then we have this little demon. Uh, well, he right, so, so this, again, I share this with you as so that you can listen to this as an example of how this is very conversational. This is just her talking, right? It's just her sharing an opinion, sharing some ideas. That's the purpose of this podcast. Um, 
I also, I think it was Adan's uh, example. Let's listen to his here. Again, there were several really good examples, but these two stood out. Engineers that nothing is around, uh, and if something is around the sea, uh, they have to inform those people in the boats, for example, because the rockets that uh, that is uh, that the spacecraft is composed with uh, rockets are going to fall again. Uh, they are going to return to the Earth, so they must check that nothing is is around. Um, so uh, spacecraft is. Com so no notice this, like in both cases, both of these examples. They're, they're, they say, uh, they're, they're mistakes. Maybe they mispronounce a word here or there. I, I'm not interested in that, okay? I, I'm, I don't care how many errors and mistakes that you make. I really don't. All I'm interested in is you sharing an idea that is of interest to you, but where you're sharing, you're talking, and you're creating the language. And I honestly mean this. I don't care how bad it is. But I don't want you to read anything. Not for these podcasts. These podcasts have a very specific purpose. The purpose is that you become more comfortable speaking off the top of your head, right? Which is an idiomatic expression that means that you're creating the language just as Today in class, when we're talking to each other, when you guys are giving your responses to these questions, these speaking activities, this is an example of you creating language. And so this is the purpose, all right? And going forward from now on for the rest of the semester, these podcasts, you're going to get credit. You're going to get full credit if you're creating the language, if you're not reading from a script. Again, it doesn't matter how many errors or mistakes that you make. For this type of activity, you're not being graded on the mistakes that you make. You're being graded on the way your attempt, your effort, your, uh, your attempt to create the language and not read from a script. Okay, so please Pay close attention, and pra if you have to practice the p podcast, I think that's great too. If you want to practice two or three times before you record it, great. Do whatever you have to do, but don't worry about the mistakes. Don't worry about misspeaking, but these podcasts, all of our podcasts going forward need to be in this way. And I would go back and check out Adan's and Jazz's and their others and just see what if you need more examples, if you want to hear more about what it is I'm talking about. But it's very simply not reading from a text, and it's really obvious. Again, it's really super obvious when you're reading. And with the mistake and all, the podcast actually sounds better than when you're reading, right? A podcast, when you're just reading from a text or a script, it, it makes the podcast in general, it makes it uh, more boring. So you want to offer your own way of speaking in the podcast, mistakes and all. So I want to really, uh, I want you guys to pay really close attention going forward when you're creating your podcast. I'm going to be talking, um, giving you some instructions at the end of today's class about what we're going to do this week for our podcast. It's going to be a little bit different. Um, but really try to focus and try to get the most out of these podcasts by trying to become more comfortable speaking in English. Again, that's, that's the purpose. All right. So next thing that I would like to do. And let me open this up here. Hopefully you can still see my screen. Um, I shared a video in sh with you guys in Microsoft Teams, and I'm starting to move all of the content that, we, uh, that we've completed so far into this space called Notion. This is not a requirement that you go into this, but this is 
helpful for me to organize my ideas and also to share with others what we've done so far and what we're going to do for the rest of the semester. So if this is helpful in organizing kind of what we've done and what we need to do, uh, feel free to access this website. This website is open to the public. You don't need to sign in to access the content right at this point. But again, uh, I wanted to have for you guys a different way to access and see what's going on. Um, for example, if you're looking at the calendar view on Friday, you see that we have a task here. Uh, this is what we're doing today on the 20th of October. Uh, you can click on here and get information. So it helps me stay organized. Hopefully, if you find it useful, then feel free to use it. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to use it. We're going to continue using Microsoft Teams. We're going to continue having online classes as we've done. Nothing will change there. And you can still contact me via chat if you need, if you have questions, right? So that's nothing is going to change in that respect. This is, again, just an, a way to uh, organize the information that we've done. And uh, if anyone wants and is concerned about what we're doing in our class, uh, this is where I'm going to send them. OK, so we're still going to have uh, some of what we create in class private and uh, we're not we're not changing any of that aspect of the class. All right, so today what I'd like to do, we're going to start thinking about. Um, travel making travel plans, OK, and. Let me. And uh, let me go back. Into our chat. And I, I want to ask you guys a few questions, and this is where if you guys want to open up and you turn on your cameras, uh, I want to speak with you guys, have a conversation as a group um, about travel plans. OK, and some last week, uh, the question, uh, a lot of you answered questions about choosing different places here in Mexico that you that you would recommend visiting, and it's related to that response, today's topic. I want to want to think about if you had to set up travel plans and make travel plans, what would you consider? What do you have to think about when you're putting together travel plans for, let's say, a vacation? So what do you think? Go ahead and unmute your mic, guys, if you want. Again, open up your cameras if you wish so we can see each other. What do you think? Any ideas? Can you repeat the question, teacher? Yes. So let's say that you, your family, right, or your friends want to plan a vacation. Mm -hmm. So you have to set up travel plans. You have to make travel plans. OK, uh, and so what what would you consider when you think about making travel plans? For example, the transport, um, the money, the hospedaje, I don't know, say. When All right, so, to... so trans, what's the word in, uh, for transport, or what's another way of saying that? Ah, uh, like. And jump in, guys. What's, I'm sorry? What's the word? It's not it's it's very similar to transport. What what part of speech is transport? Now let's put on our grammar hats a little bit. I don't know if it's like <laughs> if it's like traveling or that. All right, so here's the word transport. What part of speech is transport? It's a verb. A noun. It's. Uh, you can use it as a noun and as a verb because transport is, yeah. All right, so. It's a noun. It's a noun and a clause. <laughs> you can use it like. All right, so, all right, so so <laughs> it certainly is a verb. All right, so it can be used as a verb. Um, how would you use it as a noun? At 
tra for, for example, traveling is very good, you know, to know more places. You're describing it now. Now, the, the, the main what's a, thing in that. What's, what's another way of saying, what's the noun form? I'm thinking there's a, a more common way of using the same form of this word, but as a noun. Any ideas? Transporting. Transporting. Sorry. Transporting. Transporting. Is. What is transporting? Is. Ah, uh, no teacher. Um, maybe I, I it's will... different in, in Spanish and English. Oh, I really okay, like uh, Liz. All right, so let's give Liz a ch shot here. What do you think, Liz? Um, maybe I can say. My transport will be a car or something like that. All right. Anybody else have any ideas? Let's it's there's a form of this same word. OK, there's a form of this word that's very common. It's commonly used as a noun. So what form of the word of transport? Do you think we could use? It's almost the same word, but it's it's used as a as a noun. Anyone else? Transportation. Transportation. Um, Remember, um, shun. It's. Like it's 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 like in Spanish, right? The last T I O N, transportation, education, right? Those are usually noun forms. So it's very common when you see at the end of a word T I O N that that's going to be usually a noun, right? It's just like in Spanish, sion, right? Sion. Transportación, educación, right? So transportation, all right? So when we're creating travel plans, we're planning a vacation, transportation. What would transportation include? What could it include? For example, the coast teacher. Because the driver, the. OK, but the question is, what is included? In transportation, first of all, so what what is trans? What could be transportation? What is it? Mm, like, well, I don't know if you were for like airplane, bus and that stuff. That's it. Oh, so OK, we, all right, so we can we can take take a bus. The main of transport. Sorry. Can the you repeat that? Transport. No? The kind. The kinds of transportation. Remember, it's kinds of the kinds or the types of transportation or the forms of transportation. So we have. We can take a bus. What else? A airplane. Plane. Take an airplane. Plane. Train. We could take a train. Bus. Bicycle. I'm sorry. A bus. A, a bus. How do you pronounce bus? Bus. 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 It's bus. like us. A us. boat teacher. <laughs> a boat. Maybe depending on where you're going and coming <laughs> from. I don't know. We could take a boat from Aguas Calientes to. Uh, Acapulco. <laughs> <laughs> it would be fun. fun. Unless it was in the back of a, you know, a car was pulling it from behind. I guess that's possible. All right. So we got a boat, we got a bus, we got trains, we got pl airplanes or planes. Anything else? We could um, take our car yeah. if uh -huh. we have a car. Yeah, uh, I was going to motorcycle. Say that. A motorcycle. A uh, train train that's right okay so a lot of different ways that we could 
Um, a trans- rocket. <laughs> a rocket, right, exactly. We could do a rocket, of course. Teacher, can I see you or ask you something? Sure. Um, I don't know if you can, like, put um, a mode in Teams that it names together mode. Uh, can you repeat that again, please, Paulina? Um, can I say it in Spanish? No, try try it again. Okay. Um, there's like a um, way to like you can see all the persons in the in the call that are with the camera on. Right. I don't know if you know that, and um, um, it's it's for like you can't see it see us. Well, I can see everybody. I mean, not everybody, but I can. I see like a what's called a grid view, and I and when you have your cameras on, I see you. Maybe you don't see. Do you, I mean, I see like right now. I see you and I, uh, Andrea, Tanya, Monica, Liz, Di, and Fernando. That, that's who I see right now, and Susie. Ah, okay. Teacher, <laughs> but it is uh, Paulina refers to it is some. Mm, option that you can see all of us. The option is uh, together mode preview. That's the mode. name. Like that? I mean, I just changed it for me. I don't know what it looks like for you guys. That's that's like right now I'm on uh, together mode and I, it looks like you guys are sitting in seats. Yeah, yeah, there. But what do you see? No, we see that the same. But I oh, was okay. just asking, like, if you know that, like, for you to see us. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's pretty much the same. Like, I, I here's what I have. I have together mode. I have now my the larger gallery, which is fine. It looks like I see everybody. And then the gallery. And honestly, for me, it's pretty much the same. I mean, they change a little bit. I guess, yeah, I guess the, the gallery... I like the gallery the best. I see everybody in squares. Again, not everybody. It looks like I've got nine. Does anybody else want to turn on the camera and jump in? I really prefer when you guys have your cameras. And I know it's eight o'clock. I mean, I, I can't I can't even tell if you have makeup on or anything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you comb your hair. It just it looks much better seeing you guys. So if anybody else wants matter, to, I have in my breakfast with me, <laughs> doesn't matter if you want to nibble a little bit and uh, <laughs> eat breakfast, get your morning coffee, go for well, it. Well, let me go for my cereal. <laughs> well, hurry. You should uh, take your phone with you so that you don't miss one minute of our class. I can right. hear. Oh, you can hear me. Okay, cool. Um. All right, so uh, just one more question here before we continue on. Can you guys change your view yourself on, on what you see or not? Can, can you change your gallery view? No, teacher. I don't have like that option because in another class, somebody was explaining how to change it, but I don't know. Okay, anybody else have an option? Like when you go into the three dots, the, the ellipsis at the top. Is it sitting in the option or no? Um, no. No? Okay. Yeah. All right, well, we'll, let's see. I don't know, together mode, I guess. No, I don't like the together mode. It looks weird. It looks strange. I like the large gallery. All right. Okay. So transportation, guys. A lot of different ways that we can, um, you know, we can use transportation for our destination. And of course, it's going to depend on where we're going, where we're coming from. So transportation. All right. So what else should we consider when we plan a trip? When we make travel arrangements. The amount um, of people we're going to go. Okay, who is going to go? All right, so 
if we're talking about family members, if we're talking about friends, um, we need to decide how many people are going to go. What else? What else would you consider? And the place and the cost. All right, the the place and the cost, but specifically, what else? What you've got transportation. You know how many people are going. And let's say that you've chosen a destination, Puerto Vallarta, for example. What else would you consider in your travel arrangements? How long time they're going to travel? All right. So how many days? We'll assume how many days, not how many months or how many years, right? So usually days. How many days? How long is the trip? OK. That's important. What else? Um, like, where are we going to go? Right, where we're going to go. That's the, the destination. For example, teacher, uh, if the day is going to have like a uh, duration, duration, Yes, duration. The 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 duration of the trip. Yeah, like the right. duration of the trip is going to be like two days. You have to know where they're going to sleep. If they're in a, in a car, they're going to rent a room. A okay, bungalow. so. All right, so, so what kind of so what do you need to consider then? So how many days, where you're going to stay? Yeah. The the hotel, no. What, where's which hotel? Are you gonna stay at a five star hotel, or are you gonna stay at like? <laughs> it's expensive. <laughs> or are you gonna stay in like a hotel or a motel or a one star? <laughs> yeah, a red hotel, right? Some <laughs> horrible place, yeah. right? So, but that's that's what you need to decide, right? What hotel? Where do you want to stay? Where do you want to stay? What else do you have to consider? The food that you are going to eat. All right, the food that you're going to eat. All right, so what else can you say about that? So the food, what else? What are the decisions that relate to food? Well, I think consider? that it's like depend like how many money you are going to like, um, I don't know, like divide, like some, some money for food, some money for the hotel, and some money for transportation. And what do we call that? What you just described? We have a word for that in English. I don't know. <laughs> what is she? What is she explaining? What is she? What do we call that? To divide the cost. Sorry. To divide like the cost of. The yeah. What What's the word in English that? means that you set you figure you plan so much money on the hotel so much money on this so much money on this administration okay and, all right so we have administer you could say someone administers the money but we have a special word for before you go on a trip, right? Before you administer money. the money, you're planning. You're yes. saying, okay, I have so much money or I'm saving so much money for this trip for certain parts. What's the word in English for, for that? Starts with a B. Uh, B B B is in uh, B, Benjamin. B, 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 B. Be grande. A B. Budget. Have you heard of that word before? Budget. Do not. <laughs> All right. Somebody might say, 
I can't go to the hotel the hotel Ryu because it's too expensive. It's not within my budget. I haven't budgeted my money. Right? So budget can be a verb, it can be a noun. Right? I'm budgeting means I'm saving money or I'm planning on allocating certain amount, amounts of money for a trip. Right? So a budget. Our activity today is going to be you guys budgeting for a trip. Okay, so this can be used as a verb or a noun. So you need to budget. You're planning certain amount of money. You're going to budget so much money for food. You're going to budget so much money for hotel. You're going to budget so much money for transportation and so on. So the food, what else can we say about the food? What, what are our options? When you go on to, uh, when you go on a vacation and you have to plan on food, what are the different ways that you plan, that you could plan mm -hmm. for? For example, if you're, if you're going to let's say the mariscos, the food, the seafood, like, like fishes, like amarane, um, something like that, it, it's very cheaper because you're in the coast of the, the yeah. And All right. For example, if you go to the Guanajuato, you're going to eat tortas ahogadas. Eh, ¿Cómo se dice ahogadas? Eh, no sé. All right. Ahogadas. Eso. Y, so, por ejemplo, sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. If a person is allergic, you better, like, to, to know that, to choose the, the food. Yeah, certainly. You need to know if anyone's allergic to certain foods when you decide on where you want to eat. So one way is you could search certain restaurants. Have you done this before where you go and say, oh, I'm going to go to this place and maybe you've never gone before. You don't know the place. You don't know the location. You don't know the restaurants. You can go online maybe and find different ro uh, ho uh, restaurants to see which restaurants you might go to, right? Are they seafood restaurants? Are they Mexican food? What kind of uh, food do you like to eat? What kind of food is available? All right, so you could search for, search for restaurants, okay, or eating establishments, right, before, and see more or less. You could budget. How much money do we need to go to these types of restaurants? Okay, because you want to know exactly how much you're going to spend, or not exactly, as much as you can, how much are you going to spend, or how much is this vacation going to cost? Now, eating at restaurants is not the only option. What are other options for eating when you go on vacation, other than going to restaurants? Mm, well, I think, like, <clears throat> we... A part of restaurants, like that uh, street food, we can go to that places too. All right. All right. So street so. vendors. Okay, we call these street vendors. Okay, they're not restaurants. It's like um, I don't know if you guys have eaten. Um, if you guys like to go to, uh, we call her the La Señora en frente de la Bachua. She's es muy famosa y tienen años ahí. She's got like she's been there for 30 years or 40 years. And she every morning she she prepares tacos. Right? And she's been there for a long 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 time. She's a street vendor, right? Selling food out in the streets. So we could go to restaurants. We could go to street vendors. Anywhere else we can eat? Fast food, like McDonald's or that stuff. <laughs> okay, so we can go to fast food restaurants. Anywhere else? We can also uh, prepare our own food, like sandwiches, salads. Right, so depending on the hotel room, 
Maybe you have a kitchen in your hotel room. So that's another, that's important to know, right? If Are we going to have a kitchen in our room, in our hotel room, so that we can buy groceries? Can buy groceries, bring them over to our hotel room, and prepare our food. Certainly, that's a great way to uh, to eat, right? We can make our own food so we don't have to worry about getting an upset stomach when we go to a street vendor and we eat those tacos, those greasy tacos, and they hurt our stomach. So definitely buy groceries. We prepare our foods, making sure first that we have a kitchen. We need to know that, right? We need to know, do we have a kitchen? Otherwise, it might be a little bit difficult <laughs> to prepare food if we don't have a, a kitchen in our hotel room. All right, very good options. What else? Eat food or consume food when we go on vacation. Me. For yes. example, if, if we're going to go in a place that we're going to sleep or stay there, uh, you're going to know if you're going to take the, the food from your place where you live or you're going to buy it in the place you're going to go. Right. So if we have a kitchen in our room, we can decide, okay, do we bring groceries from home, from our home, or do we buy groceries there? Or yeah. Right. Okay. Certainly. Because That's another way. The location you're going to stay, it's going to be expensive. Or can it be cheaper? So you have to decide and compare the, the cost of the, work, the food. That's the right. Price. That's right. So when you're figuring your budget, right, we have to plan on what's, what's is it cheaper to buy groceries here in Bodega and Aguas Calientes versus <laughs> yeah. going to, you know, Puerto Vallarta <laughs> and going to some grocery store there, right? All right. Like what else? Okay. Uh, yeah, there's another place that I'm thinking about that we haven't talked about where people typically eat food when they go on vacation. We haven't talked about it yet. Where else can you eat food? Beers. Sorry? Beers. Alcohol, micheladas. Ah, uh, beers. All right. So yeah, I mean, you, that's that's what you can consume. You can consume beer. But where else? Where? What location? What other locations can you choose for eating food? Uh, we talked about restaurants, street vendors, fast food bar. restaurants, making bar. our own food. Bar, because in the in the bar there's food too. Okay, so we could go to a bar or maybe a sports bar, right, that has, mm -hmm. okay. Still thinking of another place that's really typical, super typical. Where else do we consume food? I mean, maybe it's more expensive, but it's certainly an option. It can be now, so teacher. Where? In a store, a store, any store like an OXO. Yeah, I mean, we, we, sure, we could go to OXO, we could go to, uh, maybe there's a, a VIPs. Buffet. A buffet. A buffet, and a buffet. Buffet. And these are all types of foods, buffet, right? But where, where would you find a buffet? Where might you find a buffet? In a hotel. Ding, 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 ding. In a hotel. We can eat at the hotel, no? Usually a hotel has a restaurant. Some, hotel, some hotels offer an all-inclusive plan, which means you pay a lot of money per night for the room and free food. Our boys love all you can eat because they eat a lot. So if we go to, if we go on vacation as a family and we do an all-inclusive plan, 
they gobble up the food and eat for days and days. That's what they just they eat and eat and eat and eat and eat because they love to eat. So you can also eat in the hotel. All right, you can eat as part of an all inclusive plan. Right, all inclusive, or maybe it's not all inclusive. But you have to pay. Maybe you have to go to the ho uh, the restaurant in the hotel and you pay separately. Okay, so those are all different ways for that you can consider food. So we have food, we have our transportation, we have our lodging, lodging. Our lodging is our hotel. That's where we're going to stay. It could be at a hotel, a motel. You know, some some people rent homes. Rentals. OK, maybe it's a, a, a home that's being rented and offered to the public. Sometimes that's popular in tourist attractions. So what else? Anything else we're not thinking about that we need to consider? when making travel arrangements. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Maybe yes. which places are you going to visit? Like parks or cinemas? All right, so not only the destinations, but also what do we, how about this? We'll put activities, okay? So activities could be those that uh, Di mentioned. Uh, you want to go, uh, any excursions or activities or uh, maybe uh, some special popular locations that are close to the hotel that you can go to. Maybe they're um, historical uh, events, some pyramids, things like that, right? Certainly. Teacher, uh, yes. You have to like to see the, the clouds, the clouds that you're going to take because that weather. OK, the clothes. So the clothes. This is important, all right? Not necessarily for the budget unless you have to buy some clothes, OK? But yeah, you can include what type of clothes that you're going to wear. Um, for today, I want us to think, though, more about the budget, right? What would you plan on taking that you would have to spend money on? And so for our purposes for today, clothes are going to be important, but uh, you don't have to consider buying clothes or thinking about certain clothes that you would have to pay for. Let's focus a little bit more on the lodging, the hotel, for example, the food, the transportation, the activities, right? The activities that you want to participate in, maybe beyond what's offered at the hotel. Okay, anything else that we're not thinking of that we haven't talked about for for making good arrangements? Anything else? I think that's well, I don't know if that's okay, but it's something like um when you go to the beach and you buy like some um, gifts or little gifts for your family when you go back to home. Souvenirs. All right, so maybe, yeah, the, we could buy <clears throat> or gifts, gifts for people or souvenirs. <clears throat> so definitely and that could be part of our um our budget okay anything else guys teacher yes you you can um re like to, to check uh the weather of our place because for example it can like it happen a uh, hurricane or something. All right. You don't have to the, the beaches, beach, oh, come on. beaches, beach. All right. So you'll need to check weather conditions. OK, 
Okay, so maybe we, we don't want to plan a trip. Um, oops, I spelled it wrong. Check weather conditions. Yeah. It's the second one, not the first one. We have weather versus weather. Okay, so weather. Yeah, the second one is weather conditions. And weather is a connector. Ah, All right. okay. Right, but it's the pronunciation is exactly the same weather. So yes, check weather conditions. Check weather conditions. All right, that's also important. OK. All right, so I think we've got some good ideas here. We've got some good things that we need to consider when we make travel arrangements. Number one, transportation. Number two, lodging like hotel. Number three, food. Right, food could be part of the hotel or it could be separate from the cost of the hotel. So food activities, I think that's a, an important one. Activities. What kind of excursions or activities or places do you want to visit as part of your um, as part of your vacation? We probably want to consider how many days. Should our vacation be? What we're going to do today is we're going to divide up into our teams. We're going to have new teams. And let me let me uh, remind everyone here. Um, I want I know sometimes it can be stressful when you guys work in in teams. I understand that, uh, especially when some uh, some of your classmates are not participating. So I want you to I want you to not stress about someone not participating. And just if they're not responding, then just can just complete the task and just make sure that we're communicating, that you're communicating to me what's going on, because I need to know those things. It's not because and it's not a reflection, a bad reflection necessarily on the classmates. If something comes up, I mean, I understand. And maybe they they for that week, they couldn't participate or whatever. But I need to know. Just let me know that they're not participating, right? But also communicate with each other to make sure that everyone is given an opportunity to participate and contribute, that everyone is has has equal say in what's what's going on. Okay, it's very important that some some classmates don't feel like they're not being um, included, right? In in the process. But today we're going to separate into new teams. And I'm going to share my screen right now and show you. And you also have access to this. But these are going to be our new teams. And let me open up here real quick. Page. We'll separate into our teams in Microsoft in our groups and our channels. And here are the teams for this week. And I'll scroll down slowly. Look, for, try to find your name in these teams. If for some reason your name doesn't appear, if you, if I if I missed you, please let me know. Make sure that your name is somewhere in one of these teams. If you don't see your name, let me know right away, please. Most of the teams have three members. It looks like. Uh, yeah, I think they all have. Three members, it looks like. OK, does everybody. Anyone not see their name? Yes. So here's here's what I'd like to begin doing today. All right. Now I'll give you the rest of the class to begin this task. Um, you probably won't finish for today. That's fine. We'll continue uh, tomorrow. We'll have some time tomorrow to work on this. But here's our our um, here are our instructions. OK, so we want to try to come up with a budget. I want you to think about 
uh, creating a budget for a family of four. Okay, so I'm going to type in here family of four. All right, now in this family, we have two parents and two, I'll put children, but the children, one child is 18, so young adult child, okay? One child is 14, no, 15. All right, so a family of four, two parents and two children. One child is 18 years old, one child is 15 years old. You, your team, your team, you work for a travel agency, okay? A travel agency is responsible for making travel arrangements or travel plans for this family. All right, and the vacation, they want a vacation in Mexico. They want a vacation in Mexico, but they don't have a lot of money. All right, they don't have a lot of money. How much money do they have? I don't know how much money they have, but I want you to find, I want you to come up with a travel uh, a vacation plan that is, that gets the most value for the money. Now, now this doesn't mean necessarily that it's the cheapest. All right. So again, the most valuable vacation or the money. What this means is whatever amount that they spend, they're getting the very the most out of that experience. That's going to be the best possible vacation that they could have for the money that they are spending. Again, this doesn't mean that it's the cheapest. It doesn't mean that it's the cheapest. It means for this amount of money, you're going to be able to do a lot of good things, great fun things with the family, considering two parents, two children, one young adults, I should say, one 18 years old, another 15 years old. All right, that's going to be the task. Now, I would like for you to, as a team, share Sway, and you can create the Sway, the link to the, the Sway in your group, but share and create a sway or presenting your travel arrangements. All right, so share a, a sway that all of you can access. All right, and um, if anybody has questions about how to share a sway, let me know. But I want all of you to share a sway so that you have one sway per team. And each team member can edit the sway. All right, so um, if you go in, let me share my screen real quick. And if you go into let's go into Microsoft 365, you're going to open up a sway. And you create a new sway and you can use different formats if you want, make it look nice. Top right hand corner of the screen, you have an option to share your sway. And you'll need the uh, emails, 
the university emails of your classmates or the ID. And here you can. You should be able to share with specific people or those within your organization. Right. The main thing is that you can uh, edit that each of you can edit this way. OK, so you can use this. And I would click edit here. See this button is one is to view and the other is to edit. So you want to click edit so that when you share this link with your uh, with your teammates that everyone can edit this way. OK, and you can should be able to just copy this link. Right, I think there's ways to choose specific people. You can type in the addresses here. There's many different ways here that you can do it. Um, let me know if you have questions or problems about sharing your sway, but let's use a sway to create the travel plan. We're going to create a travel plan. All right, so today I want us to begin the activity. OK, we're not going to finish today, but I want you to form your teams, get into your teams, begin sharing the sway and uh, begin completing this uh, activity. Now, this needs to be uh, a real travel plan in the sense that you need to go online and find prices. Find restaurants, find activities, whatever you want to include in the travel plan. And uh, I'm going to let you decide on how many days. OK, so remember, your objective is to try to get as much value as possible. So I'm thinking anywhere from probably three days <clears throat> to, let's say, 10 days. OK, um, but you decide exactly how many days that you uh, want to include in your travel plan. Again, I think between three to the 10 days, I wouldn't go more than 10 days uh, for this. Uh, this activity. All right, any questions about this task? No, teacher. No, teacher. No, teacher. Well, well yes, uh, we have to like add out it in the subway. No, 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 come on. In the, in this way. Um, the audience. The audience, is that what you said? Yes, <laughs> because I said Subway. Uh, ah, yeah. Subway. The audience, okay, so the audience is going to be a family of four. Okay. Oh, let, let's say that the family of four is from Aguas Calientes, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're all starting from Aguas Calientes. It's a family of four, and you can choose anywhere in Mexico as a destination. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a family of four from... I was kind of, but yeah. Okay, um, but I have to record my voice and put off. Oh, hi, everyone, and I want to see you. Okay, for right now, um, and I'm glad you mentioned that, all right? We didn't mention uh, the recording your meetings. Everyone should record your meetings, just as we've done before. Hit record, but this is not yet part of the presentation. All right, so you're not presenting. Uh, you're still planning. Estás planeando todavía. Yes, you're you're developing the travel plan. So, and this is so important. This is something else I wanted to talk about. Last week, I go back and I listen to your your meetings. Okay, maybe you think I don't I don't listen, but I go in and I, I I'm nosy. Right. I want to hear what's going on. I want to hear what you're talking about. So I go in and I listen to your meetings. And guess what I'm listening for? Take a guess. Take a wild guess. What am I listening for? Any ideas? No, no. Yes, it's clear. What am I listening for? When I go into your informal meetings, I'm not talking about your 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 products your your uh, oh, okay. your final videos I'm talking about those informal meetings that you join that you're talking to each other about 
whatever activity that I ask you to do, what am I listening for? A lot of English. Yes, exactly, Jesus. That's right. I'm just I'm look I'm listening if you guys are talking to each other in English because oh guess what? I still hear people speaking in Spanish. And you guys speak really great in Spanish. I mean, respect. Right? But take this opportunity. And today is going to be a perfect opportunity for you to record your online meetings, open up your sway, start talking together about, okay, what's our, where's our, our destination? All right, where, what should we include? What kind of transportation? What kind of food? But in English. And it doesn't matter if you have a lot of spaces and gaps where you're not talking and then you come back and you're talking and then you're a lot of space. But when you're other, right, you're speaking in English. Right now, I'm not asking for the final presentation. This is just you recording your online meetings working together talking I, i'm i want to hear how you're talking together in english about preparing the travel plan that you're going to create in sway the travel plan is going to be created in sway right now the only thing i'm asking you to do is to talk to each other to prepare and create this for this family of four from aguas Calientes. all right so um, again, I, I, I'm not talking yet and giving you any kind of instructions about how to present or, you know, this to the family. We're not there yet. Right now, you're still in the travel agency and they just called you and said, hey, we want a good value vacation somewhere in Mexico. We have two kids. And let us know. Right. So this is what what we're doing uh, today at this point, okay? Again, we're not creating anything formal yet. This is just you guys talking and working together, but speaking in English, okay? So please speak in English. And when one of your classmates speaks in Spanish, say, well, how would you say, just be really nice and polite and say, hey, great, you did a good job in Spanish. Felicidades, right now. How would you say that in English? And encourage each other and be patient and wait. When somebody's struggling, just wait, wait and give them an opportunity to try to express themselves in English. Really, guys, this is where the value in this class comes from. If, if we don't speak English in these meetings, you're just wasting your time. You're wasting your time, right? This is for you to become more comfortable with speaking in English. And the only way to become more comfortable is to first feel uncomfortable. I mean, that's the truth. Am I right? I mean, there's no, there's no magic bullet. The only way to feel more comfortable to speak English is to first feel uncomfortable. And guess what? If you keep doing it and you keep working, you become less uncomfortable as you go along, I promise. But there's only one way to feel less uncomfortable, and that's just to do it. All right, so let's do it. That's already 9, 9.28. All right, I'll tell you what. Um, we're going to start first thing tomorrow, starting this activity. We still have a few minutes. Um, let's just jump very quickly into our groups, record just a 10-minute discussion. And try to share your sway. Talk about whatever you can for 10 minutes. Come back at 940 because I have some uh, uh, very important instructions for this week for our podcast. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. Jump into your groups. Create a sway. Say a few things. Record. Please record your session for today. Start a week nine folder. Right. The same routine. We'll upload your recording from today's meeting in the folder for week nine. All right, let's go ahead and uh, jump in and do that. And we'll come back at 940, about 10 minutes. Okay. 
All right, guys, it's 940. Uh, wanted to go ahead and close today's class. Uh, today, we uh, started by focusing on really the importance of getting the most out of our podcast episodes. And one of the things that we're, one of the reasons that we're using these podcasts, creating these podcasts, is so that we become more comfortable speaking. And the only way to do that is to try to make it as conversational as possible and not reading from scripts. So please make sure that going forward that all of your podcasts, you are not reading any type of text whatsoever. Okay, and uh, this is what I'm going to be looking for uh, for the rest of your podcast episodes. Uh, we looked at a couple of examples from one from Adan and another from Jazz, and there are other very good examples, but just listen to how they are uh, creating their podcast and don't worry about making mistakes. Don't worry about pauses. Um, the main thing is that you're creating the language to share some ideas about uh, a subject that uh, interests you. Uh, today we started uh, talking about travel plans, making travel plans, and uh, you formed your groups. Tomorrow we're going to continue this activity. And I'll give you time in class to develop your ideas and, and uh, share and uh, meet with each other online, making sure that you record your sessions, making sure that you're speaking English throughout those sessions. Again, we're only concerned about using Sway and putting information out there that relates to your travel plans. We have um, the context for creating our travel plans is that we have a family of four from Aguascalientes, who wants to travel someplace in Mexico with their family, and they want to get the most value out of their vacation. All right. And the last thing I'll talk about today uh, for this week, our podcasts are going to be a little bit different. If you go to the calendar view in uh, Notion and you open up on Friday, our week nine podcast episode number seven, you'll see a video and I'll share this link right now with you in the chat. But I want you to watch this video and try to watch this video as soon as possible before you begin thinking about your podcast episode for this week, because I'm going to ask that you team up with mate and do an interview for this week's podcast. The video explains uh, what uh, you're to do for this week. And here you'll see a text document and it looks like I actually have the wrong one. So I apologize for that. Let me, um, if you give me two minutes, I will share with you the correct file. Uh, let me share with you in chat the link to this video. Okay, so the link here that I'm I'm sending in uh, in Microsoft Teams in the chat. Okay, this should take you to this page that we're looking at now. And if you'll give me one second, I will upload the Teams. All right, and I'm doing that now. Okay, so here are the, oops, maybe. Here we go. All right, here are the teams for the podcast, the interviews. All right, so you should be able to access this file to find your interview partner. Okay, this is going to be who you're going to partner up with for this week's podcast for week nine, podcast episode number seven. And uh, here, the video, uh, will you'll find all of the instructions for the podcast. So I would like for you to watch the video and, and then tomorrow uh, prepare any questions that you have about how we're going to work differently for this week for our podcast. Okay, so I wanted to give you guys a heads up. Uh, this is going to be due for Friday, just as we've done in prior episodes. 
Um, but you can choose when you can uh, get together with your partner to complete this podcast. All right, guys, I think we'll stop there for today. Does, it, uh, does anyone have any questions about anything that we've talked about uh, for today? No, did you? Uh, teacher. Yes. I have a question. Um, we had to. Um, okay, that's why. Then we can put, uh, for example, place or restaurants like to recommend the family of another republic state, or it had to be uh, about Aguascalientes. Uh, think of this way as a formal way to present your travel plan. So imagine that you would present this way to the family and and include the different aspects that we talked about today about what you would include in the those travel plans. So I don't want you to feel that you you don't need to talk much about like uh, justify why how do i explain this you don't have to say a lot no tienes que hablar mucho de de mexico right just explain more about the prices and what you can do for example in the activities what's included in the hotel uh the transportation just things that they would need to know to understand the travel arrangements and the costs and you know, you can say something about, for example, the activities. Oh, this would be, this is a great opportunity because for only, you know, 500 pesos, you can do this, 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 and this, right? And and these are these are really interesting aspects of, you know, the, the activities and, and it's very representative of Mexico. But you don't have to go into a lot of explanation. And right now, um, we're not even preparing for presenting this yet. Right now, we're just planning, right? So tomorrow, the only thing I'm expecting is that you guys are working together, planning and creating the sway. And again, not planning on presenting yet, all right? We're not there yet, all right? So we're going to go through several steps this week to finish this task, all right? So there's, this is just the first step that, that we're going to be starting with. Okay, so does that answer your question, Susie? Yes, teacher. Okay. Yes, because we was um, um, saying, like, for example, if we are going to recommend places in Aguascalientes, we can say, oh, no, you can go to uh, San Marcos Fair, or I don't know. And for that, I question if it has to be about Aguascalientes places, or we can do, for example, Mexico City places. Yeah, you, it can be anywhere in, in Mexico, but you decide, part of your task as a team is to decide on the destination. So you're not, I don't want you to think like, uh, okay, I'm going to present four possible locations. No, you choose the location, right? The way that the transportation, the food, I mean, everything that you guys decide as a team should be to provide the best value for the cost that it that it requires to go and 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 take part in that vacation all right so okay. it you might say it, it's not always about okay mexico for example mexico city is always the best w place to, to vacation well maybe if you go to puerto vallarta maybe they have plans there for transportation you found some good discounts or or maybe there's certain excursions there that are not available in another location in mexico so that's all part of you guys in, investigating and this is going to require that you go online and and find this information and talk about it as a team that's why in these recordings i want you to record them the online meetings share your screens go online talk about it as a team look at different locations and different packages and plans and and decide together as a team uh you know what what would be the best travel plan okay teacher thank you okay. you're welcome any other questions guys no okay. 
Um, I have a question about um, what you put in the chat because I just like joined the call. OK, what, what's your question? Um, what, is, what is it and what are we going to do with that? OK, are you referring to the podcast um, assignment? Mm, what you put in the chat that the link. OK, the last link I just uploaded was for uh, the podcast assignment for this week. So if you go to that page, you'll find a video that explains what we're going to do for this week. So I'm going to ask everyone first to watch the video with the instructions. The teams, your t your partner, there's a, a there's a link to a file where you can find your partner and and then tomorrow, if you have questions, we can talk about, you know, any doubts that you have. But I want you to first watch the video uh, because we're going to do this week's podcast a little bit different than what we've done in the past. OK, that's OK. okay. Thank you. All righty. All right, guys, I think we'll stop there for uh, for today. We'll continue tomorrow. We didn't get to our song. I had planned on a song, but we had problems with Google Meet. So tomorrow we'll start with our song. And then we'll continue working in our groups, working on our travel arrangements. All right, guys, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. It's good to see you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. 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 Bye. 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 See you.